Hi, and welcome to this Friday's five minute consult with your favorite family medicine doc. In these videos, I discuss everything that you need to know about some of the most common health conditions listed from A to Z, and today's topic starts with the letter H. So let's talk about heartburn. What is it? Heartburn is an irritation of the esophagus that is caused by stomach acid. It's a condition where acid from the stomach makes its way up to the esophagus and causes an irritation or burning sensation. Most of the pain, burning, or discomfort that you feel with heartburn is located right under your breastbone. And despite its name, heartburn actually doesn't have anything to do with your heart, but sometimes the pain or burning sensations that you can feel with heartburn can be similar to those that are caused by heart problems such as heart attack or heart disease. What are the symptoms? So the main symptom of heartburn is a burning sensation that you feel behind your sternum or your breastbone in the middle of your chest. You may also feel pain or irritation in your throat area. You can feel pain in your chest when you bend over or lay down. You may notice a hot, acidic, or bitter taste in the back of your throat. And sometimes with heartburn, it can be hard to swallow because you're noticing that reflux in the back of your throat. The length of these symptoms can vary some people experience it just for a few minutes, a sharp burning sensation, while others can have heartburn symptoms lasting up to a few hours. Again, heartburn is a very common condition and a lot of Americans can experience heartburn up to once a week. Also, heartburn can be more common in pregnant women. As you can imagine, their baby is pushing on their stomach area and thus leading to more heartburn symptoms. What is the cause? Most commonly, the cause of heartburn is due to a weakening in the muscular structure of the sphincter between your stomach and your esophagus, known as the lower esophageal sphincter. When you eat, your food is digested, it goes down your esophagus and then into your stomach and the lower esophageal sphincter closes. However, if this structure between your esophagus and your stomach gets weak at all, it can have trouble closing tightly and it can open back up again, leading to reflux. There are a couple of reasons why the sphincter doesn't work properly, and one of those includes overeating, which means you have too much food in the stomach opening up the sphincter, and another one is having too much pressure on your stomach, and this can be due to pregnancy, obesity, or even constipation. Also, certain foods can affect your lower esophageal sphincter and lead to increased stomach acid. These foods include tomatoes, citrus fruits, garlic and onions, chocolate, coffee or caffeinated products, alcohol, and peppermint. Meals high in fats or oils can also lead to heartburn, as well as certain medications, stress, or lack of sleep, as these can raise the amount of stomach acid that you have. If you are pregnant, the hormone progesterone can also relax the lower esophageal sphincter and lead to heartburn. And lastly, smoking also relaxes this sphincter and leads to increased stomach acid and heartburn. Diagnosis. If your heartburn goes on for long periods of time and becomes chronic, that is known as GERD, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease. Your doctor will talk to you about your symptoms and how long you have had them, but if your symptoms are more serious, your doctor may need to perform a few tests, which include a special type of x-ray known as a barium swallow. For this procedure, your doctor will have you drink a special solution of barium suspension. It coats the lining of your esophagus and your stomach and will let your doctor know if there's any issues with that valve we talked about called the lower esophageal sphincter. The second type of test that your doctor can use is with something called an endoscope. This is basically a flexible type of camera that your doctor can use to look at the structures of your esophagus and stomach. There is also something called an esophageal motility test, and that is where they put a catheter down your esophagus and can measure the pressure and movements of your esophagus. What is the treatment? Most of the time, heartburn can be treated with over-the-counter medications such as antacids. 
Antacids are medications that help reduce the amount of acid within your stomach and can help reduce the heartburn feeling and your pain. They can also sometimes help with symptoms of indigestion and gas. If your symptoms are more severe and they are not being treated with the over-the-counter medications, then you can see your doctor for a prescription heartburn medication. These can include medications that are known as acid blockers or something known as proton pump inhibitors, which also reduce the amount of acid within your stomach and therefore treat your heartburn. Complications. Sometimes heartburn can lead to certain complications and these include a recurrent or long-term cough due to your reflux, laryngitis, which is the inflammation of your larynx and affects your ability to speak, inflammation or ulcers of your esophagus, problems swallowing because of a narrow esophagus, and something known as Barrett's esophagus, which is a condition that puts you more at risk for esophageal cancer. And that's as a result of having serious long-term irritation and inflammation within your esophagus over many years. If you have Barrett's esophagus, your doctor is going to occasionally monitor you with that test we talked about called the endoscope to make sure that the lining within your esophagus is not turning into a cancerous tissue. Now let's talk about prevention. To prevent getting symptoms of heartburn, you want to be avoiding those acidic type foods that we talked about, including tomatoes, citrus fruits, garlic and onions, chocolate, caffeine, or extra coffee. You will also want to avoid laying down within the first half hour after you eat, as that can also lead to reflux. And that wraps up our discussion today on heartburn. If you have any other questions on this topic, let me know in the comments and I would be happy to answer those for you. If you would like to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe as I am making new videos every Friday and I will see you on the next video. Until next time, bye.